Welcome to the Life and Money Podcast with Danielle and Franchelle. I'm Danielle. And I'm Franchelle. And this is the podcast where we talk about what's keeping you from having the life and money you want and deserve. Okie dokie. And today we are continuing our series on relationships. We've explored lots of different relationships as they relate to your money and your life and overcoming trauma. And today is no different. Danielle, what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about business relationships, Mm -hmm. business relationships. So whether that is um, business relationships like what you and I have or ones where we have mentorships um, or even navigating business relationship as a woman, a female entrepreneur. So Mm -hmm. all of these different aspects. Um, what, What has been your thought of business relationships like before Mm-hmm. you were an entrepreneur. Yeah, so interesting. I don't think that so I think we should do a separate show when it comes to like coworkers cuz mm-hmm. that feels like a very different thing than as an entrepreneur interacting with other businesses, business owners, mentors and biz besties. That feels like a totally separate world. Um but in this world I think that you know, having a mindset coach is very important because we absolutely bring our trauma into these settings. And even in networking, you know, how people network with other business owners, depending on what your idea is about yourself and your interactions with other people, like high school, right? It it determines how you how you show yourself and how you represent your your fledgling business in networking rooms. You know what's so interesting, and I love how you separated that we'll talk about coworkers different than um, business relationships, because when you go into a job, you get you don't have to bring your authentic self. You bring a persona into the work, and you put on that persona for a period of time, and there might be aspects of yourself, but you don't. Your self is not driving the business, right? Like wow. you get to do a role. You are that specific who for the job. Um, and that who could be whatever you want. And I know in one of my jobs, I even had a different name I used. Really? Um, yeah, because I, I like I would um, go by Nikki, which is my middle name, my, mm. Nicole, but I went by Nikki a lot. Um, and it just cut out some of the fluff. And so um, it cut out the fluff because it sounds like it would add fluff for me. Like I'd be confused. Well, like I just for certain parts of it, I was like, I just call me Nikki. And like, mm-hmm. I didn't have to explain who I was. I just got to be Nikki uh, okay. for that period of time. And the other parts of me, I didn't include when I was mm-hmm. Nikki. Um, but in business, you have to bring all of you. Like, yeah. it's like all of you comes to the table um, in one part or another. And the parts that you would have preferred to put in a closet come out. Mm-hmm. These business relationships squeeze them. You know that is I mean? so true. It's so true. And the funny thing is, the more you like start to recognize and give attention to those parts of you that you would normally hide, the more business, it's like the business is there to grow you out of that. Yep. And it's, it's fascinating. It's like, it's harder. It's harder when you're, when you're not bringing your whole self. I mean, that's been my experience. I don't know. As I'm thinking this, it's like I'm hesitating because I'm thinking of people who like have this skyrocketing growth. And I'm like, did they do all the work? Like, what happened? <laughs> you know, you see that happening and it's like, why did I you get to ask this? My core belief is that if we really understood the nitty gritty, they had, I, I don't know if it's possible or it would be short lived, right? Yeah. Like it might not, we might see the hype, but then they disappear and we never really hear from them again. That's true. Um, I just feel like it's, it feels today and maybe I'm wrong and I've been wrong before, but it's almost impossible not to bring your full self and Mm -hmm. get great results. You know what I mean? Like something, and let's say they do have great results, but we don't see what's happening in their marriages or behind the scenes or with their children or, you know what I mean? We just see one part. Um, Mm -hmm. I am determined to cultivate an experience where all parts of me thrive, not mm-hmm. just one like nuanced part. 
And so yeah. I think that even impacts my business relationships because I'm looking for really true, authentic relationships to partner yeah. with um, that require me to be honest mm -hmm. with the parts of me that I don't want to be, um, mm -hmm. to expose the parts, mm -hmm. um, and to be vulnerable. Right. Oh, vulnerability in business. Yeah. And the trust truth. me. Yeah. 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 And, and especially if you are, um, so like with my issue of being like this one woman show and everything, right. That was okay in medicine to just be like, okay, mm -hmm. I can take care of it. I can call in a consultant, but that consultant knows what their role is. But now in business, knowing that, no, no, I have to delegate. Right. And that brings up the trauma of like the trust issues and all of the things. And so, the relationship within business and in my business has caused me to excavate trauma that had to be dealt with for me to move to the next level. And yeah. it's always been that way. I've seen it like from the very beginning, even I started out, I didn't have a business. I just started out being live on Facebook and like talking about personal development and just that just being live, right. is like a whole thing of like, being on camera, being on video, talking about, you know, things that you hold dear to your heart and who's going to watch it and then seeing who watches it and then being like, oh my God, I can't believe that person watched it. Right. You know, and just, and all of that is all such a, a journey in like healing from everything that's come before. Yeah. I think one of the things that came up is like, you have your friendships before your business and you think naturally that those friends will become your business besties too mm -hmm. and they might have an opinion i'm thinking you know and you might lose like i know for me some of my friendships um changed drastically mm -hmm. um as i was building out as i'm continuing to build out my business and that was hard because i thought naturally if you're my friend in my mm -hmm. life before business, you will naturally transcend and become a business bestie too. Yeah. And that didn't happen. And as I was finding new people, like even finding you, how mm -hmm. that impacted some of my personal relationships, um, mm -hmm. because we had different things in common and the evolution or understanding what parts of us are being refined and how that didn't translate in my regular, my before business relationships. Mm -hmm. um, it's just very surprising. Um, there's grief mm -hmm. that comes through this that it's like, mm -hmm. where is the five print? Where, where's the book that talks about the evolution of relationships, trust, vulnerability, and entrepreneurship? You read right. in books and they don't talk about emotion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've emotion. seen, I've seen a couple really mm -hmm. honest, vulnerable, you know, conversations from people. And these are, but these are people who intentionally talk about that side that you don't hear about. Mm. And I always appreciate that because it's like, nobody's telling you these things. Yeah. Right? I, mean, I yeah. know what you're talking about. I, I've not come across them yet. Yeah. So I love that. So when you were going through the changes with your friends, and things, did that bring up trauma from before when you were young? Absolutely. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people, I have carried an abandonment wound mm -hmm. um, in that when I decide to be my truest, authentic self, I lose the people in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and so like if that is a wound that I carry and I see it play out within business, it's mm -hmm. like, wait, do, it almost feels like I have to pick. Do I get to be myself and have great relationships or do I need to stay in this box so I can not lose these relationships. You know, one thing that I've always wanted were like lifelong relationships. Mm -hmm. um, um, it was something that I always fantasized. I think it came from wanting to have like a structured, you know, somewhere mm -hmm. always to come home to. Mm -hmm. um, and so if I didn't happen and with my parental parenting, I wanted it with like friendships, girl, like my girlfriends. Yeah. And as that, um, started to evolve. And I was like, wait, I don't even get to have that. I have to mm. lose that in order to, you know, have this. And so definitely brought up um, pain, abandonment, grief. Um, it brings up worth. Mm. Um, so all of those things that you, that 
are uncomfortable to talk about. Like nobody likes to say, I don't feel worthy um, because it feels like you should always feel worthy. Mm. But if we don't know where we actually are in a moment of time, then we don't know what to do different to fix it. So if we mm-hmm. pretend like it's not happening because it's not a good thing to feel, mm-hmm. um, we just perpetuate the cycle, drawing deeper. And it, and it, what's happening inside shows up in our business. It shows mm-hmm. up in our marketing. It shows up in the way that we, like anything we do, it shows up in our business. So it really makes sense to get about doing the work so mm-hmm. that we have a cleaner experience in our business. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. And then that ties into money because the ability or inability to create money in our business is tied to how we show up in those business relationships. Like, for example, a lot of people have thoughts about networking. And um, I remember networking before I had a business. And so I didn't have as many of those thoughts. I was kind of like a blank slate. So when I came into doing this work, and I've only been networking for like a year, like intentionally networking, um, I came into that and I I was just like, okay, well, show me how to do it. You know, <laughs> like I wasn't, because I had made really great friends in medicine doing that because I, didn't, you know, there was nothing attached to it. There were no, the stakes were low. So it was just fun. Let's go have a steak dinner, right? Um, so in business, coming into networking as a blank slate is, is just like te- completely teachable. Like, hey, show me how to do it. I'll do, you know, what, how does this work? And then seeing other people who have so many thoughts about it and what it what it's supposed to be like and how they hate it and all this kind of thing. It's like the relationship with the people you will need to have relationships with in order to grow your business is going to impact, you know, the trauma that comes up as you're thinking about that is going to impact the money that you make. And it's, it's just so interesting to, um, to help people. And I'm sure you help people do this too. Maybe, I don't know, like peel back those layers of their actual thoughts, (laughs) the actual thoughts they have about building their business and, and collaborating and things like that. Like those thoughts that we have to get through that we think are true. And it's like, that's not even true when you really look at it. Yep. I call it the belief machine. Is that truth or trauma? And sometimes we don't even, most times we don't understand. It's a soundtrack we've been going off of, but it brings up a question when it comes to investing into relationships, right? Because there's a lot of investing into relationships, money, Mm -hmm. um, programs, um, um, even just time. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what are your thoughts on being able to invest um, and have the vulnerability to get the outcome. And when it doesn't go the way we thought mm-hmm. it was going to go yeah. what are you on that. Yeah. So as a spender, <laughs> of course, I love buying programs. I love. So when you think about like the beginning of, so I started in like 2018, 2019 and the beginning was Facebook groups. Right. So there were Facebook groups that were free, like everybody come on in. And then there were Facebook groups that were paid because you were part of the membership and you got to be in this group. And I would love being in these paid groups because you're part of something where it's like special. You have this common thing in common. And so um, I would pay to be in these groups and I would meet so many amazing people and we had things in common. And it was really, really nice. Um, And I kind of like put that up on a pedestal higher than the free groups. I can't even tell you what free groups I'm in now. Like it was all, it just, it became just this glory land of like, these are my people. And, and then we cross pollinate. Oh, I know this person from that group. Oh, we know this person from this group. And then you kind of have this kind of tribe that moves throughout most of the groups with you. And um, I had a bad experience in 2023 which I've been learning a lot of people had a rock bottom experience in 2023, either personally or professionally. I've actually read an email this morning where somebody was like, 2023 was the worst. And I was like, it's not just me. But um, I had a bad experience where I had paid to be in a group. And um, I had an expectation for what I was getting from that. And it wasn't 
actually what I was paying for. And it was mm -hmm. nobody's fault, but my own just having a group, a tribal experience being put on a pedestal and wanting that and wanting that so badly that I didn't even think about what I was being sold. Yeah. And Indeed. like, yeah. And, and what came up for me was something from childhood. So, right. Like <laughs> so many things came up from, from being small and seeing like some of the older girls and guys, like they had their little group and just wanted to be in that group. And yeah. And then watching myself over the years, not over the years, but over the time as an entrepreneur paying to be in these groups that had this, so you know, special, um, you know, attachment, you were, you know, somebody or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I don't feel that way anymore. It's not as delicious as it was before. Man, you said it so beautifully because as you were saying it, I could relate, like wanting to be part of the cool kids or whatever. Yeah, right? the cool kids, exactly. And so now all we have to do is pay to get inside. Yeah. And now we're part of the cool kids. You know what right. I mean? And so, but going back to what are we really trying to feel? Because I, I, anything that we need to feel outside of us, mm -hmm. um, we'll always have to end up chasing, right, to continue to feel it. Yeah. Versus finding a way to close up that open wound or that little hole in the container mm -hmm. and fill it up with the inside. Anything extra is bonus, right? Mm -hmm. We won't have to pay to do it. Um, and so it comes, it comes with a little bit of heartbreak though, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you get into that group and you're like, this is not what I thought it was going mm -hmm. to be. I know that at one point I was part of a group and I was accused of being in a cult because oh. I, I coveted it so much, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I loved it and I was a diehard. Mm -hmm. And so I got a lot of pushback from my um, friends that won't, weren't a part of that, you know, mm -hmm. but I was really searching for um, connection and community. Yeah, exactly. Um, and not wanting to give it up, you know? Yeah. But then along the ro road, we find authentic connections mm -hmm. that add value um, that are that aren't, you know, sourced from trying to be part of the cool kids, but really just authentic mm -hmm. connections that work and that help mm -hmm. um, and that we share and help lift and guide one another. And those are beautiful connections too. So yeah. um, they're really beautiful things that come mm -hmm. um, when we talk about that, but really doing the work inside and I mean, be comfortable and secure in your money so you know the next right decision to make. Yeah. And not get out of fear. Yeah. And, oh my gosh. Know. I've it's so interesting because since then I've talked to so many people who um didn't know they didn't have a handle on their money before investing and they got over leveraged um because they just they were like when we so you know in a financial school for spenders we track and when you know what your money is doing you can kind of see what the story is it's like you collected the data what's the story what's the next step mm -hmm. um but there's so many people who aren't looking at their money who don't know that that data should tell a story and i remember talking to one lady who said that she had um I think she had like a fractional CFO. Like she had someone who's specifically looking at her money to tell her the story of what's next. And that person was like, are you crazy? Like you, <laughs> she was just like, no, no. Like, even if you're making like $500,000 a year, this is not a good idea. Like, this is like a fifth of your, you know, it was just like, it didn't make financial sense. And I had that conversation with her and I thought, oh my gosh, the people who are, investing in this program that we had in common were making just that amount of money to get into the program. I did that. That first year I was like, I just, I like, you need this amount to get in. I got that amount. And it was like, look, stepping back and thinking like, no, you should have several times this amount in order to even decide. Right. And I think maybe savers would have done it that way. Because a lot of people who were savers were like, this is crazy. I'm not doing this. Why would we do this? Mm -hmm. But a lot of us who were spenders and who also had wounds from childhood about belonging and community and connection, like we were just clamoring to get in the room. 
And that's now that the the veil is lifted because I did I had to do my own work on that. Like, what does this remind me of? You know, and I just it brought up all these stories, and I was like, oh my gosh, you know. But it's like once the veil is lifted and you see it, it's it screams from a mile away. Any other group that's doing that, I'm like. I don't need that because I know exactly what I'm trying to get from that. And now I get that from here. Like you said, from the inside, feel it from the inside. So I don't know if that even answers your question. Cause I just went like, woo, wait. No, I mean, but it's all, it's all so good. And it's, it's the squeeze of being a business owner and having business relationships, the stuff that comes out like that it needed to come out mm -hmm. um, and it wouldn't have come out um, in your other career. Right. And for me, either the things of me, um, you know, wanting to be a part of these groups, it wouldn't have come out then. It came out on this road, but we needed it to come out. We needed yeah. all the exposure. We needed the healing. And at the same time that we were having the heartbreak with them, business relationships, we were still cultivating and nurturing really authentic ones, too. They were happening yeah. simultaneously, like as we're growing and evolving. Um mm -hmm. But it's a different skill set than coworkers. It's a different right. skill set than parenting and um, and your adult, your having relationship with your parents and your romantic relationships. It's they're all different nuances yeah. um, of love and of how it shows up um, differently in each space. They yeah. all matter, um, yeah. and I'm grateful for being aware and on the journey mm -hmm. um, and all the learnings. Um, uh, listen, being an entrepreneur shocked shocked me. I did not expect all that I was going to get. Yeah, out of this experience. Yeah, yeah. What I would say is, you know, when God is trying to move you to that next level, these things have to be dealt with. Yep. To refine Very you, well. to make you, to get you to the next level. And it's when you step back and really look at it, the person you're becoming, like the work that you do in this life is for the person that you're becoming and to be polished yeah. and, and you, yeah. 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 Yes. Period point blank in the period. So, <laughs> um, whether people are entrepreneurs or not, but they realize that they want to be able to be comfortable with their money. So they know how to invest. They know mm -hmm. how to make the next step. They know what to do. How, how do yeah. they do it? So in a financial school for spenders, I help, uh, spenders to pay off debt so that they, um, you, you know, in a way where they don't have to budget or change their spending habits. Um, and so it's easy to get started. If you just text spender to 44144, um, you get enrolled in our five day challenge, super fun five day challenge, which helps you to like start looking at your money in a way that is non-threatening <laughs> And a little bit fun and it's just the beginning of the journey to uh being able to you know be the commander of your money army mm -hmm. um so text spender to 44144 and for people who are thinking you know they may be an entrepreneur or they may not be an entrepreneur but they know that their patterns are repeating and that they keep finding themselves in the same place like how did i end up here again how can they break that cycle and get some help? Absolutely. Um, I have a free guide that if you wanted to just start and get your mind wrapped around some things, you can text text PURPOSE to 66866. But if you're ready to see transformational change in your life, you can schedule a consultation. Um, you can go to Danielle Nicole Life Coach, whether that's on Instagram or my website, book a consultation. Um, and we'll have a conversation and get you started, you know, Thanks. so very cool. Wonderful. So thank you for watching today. Um, please, should we ask them a question in the comments? Absolutely. I, I would say the question would be, what has been your biggest, mm, okay. I can't think of one. What is your question? <laughs> mine yeah. was too complicated. <laughs> yeah. I want to know like what trauma has come up for you in building your business if you have a business relationship whether it is with a friend or a mentor or just in networking like what's come up what kind of fears come up when you think about um relationships in business it's pretty broad okay, that was mine too so that was perfect 
Like, like that was a July too. So that's, okay. I was like, oh man, maybe it should be lighter. That's fantastic. That's what like, I wanted to know. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then comment, comment below. We want to hear your answer, your response. Yes. All right. Until next time, we will be back here same time next week talking about relationships with coworkers. That's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you next week. Okay. Bye. Bye.